God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung upon that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise.
And good morning. good morning on this beautiful, glorious, sunny, tulip-filled, flower-filled spring day. Wow. Thanks to the team for uh, leading us. Always good to prepare our hearts before we start corporate worship. And just that new song, we're going to sing it again, the one gratitude. It's, you know, hear it on almost every Christian radio station, and I'm grateful for the team as they uh, continually bring those things forward. So alongside the praise team, the board of elders participating in this service as well, and I'm Pastor Mark, and along with this congregation, if you're watching live on Facebook, good morning. If you're a guest with us today, good morning. If you're a family member, just turn to somebody and give them a little high five right now, and if it's your husband, put an elbow in his ribs. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. There are Pew Connection cards there. Uh, some of them, we're starting to filter uh, the old ones out, but some of them have a QR code, and if you want to, just take your phone. I promise I won't think that you're playing Candy Crush. So uh, just take that, and we can do those things together, so that's good. All right, today we will have some kids, and here they come already. So Children's Church is going to be here for the first uh, minute uh, or three or four so that they can get some of that Vacation Bible School piece of information. So we're grateful for that. Uh, it'll be our Children's Church, and they'll be there for that. And then Sunday School, and I'll have a comment about that later. And adults will be able to go into uh, that room there. We put up a slide last week and we sang to them, but this week I thought it was worth a slide again because now there's cake. <laughs> but we're just grateful for them and uh, to each and every one of you as well. So I hope it was a good day Monday. Vern, did you bring breakfast in bed to her? No. Oh. So Judy served you. That's great. All right. Happy for that too. We received some more gifts in the mail this week, as well as obviously the offering plate, but we're just mindful. Is that me? Oh, oh, good. Oh. Every once in a while I go, oh, who's talking? But I'm getting a little feed. It must be, oh no, I don't have hearing aid. I don't know what it is. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for uh, coming alongside of us financially. So we don't have, uh, yeah. Right now, no concerns. Thank you, Lord. And the deacons are making plans. We'll share those with you and get input and everything else as we talk about parking lot and lobbies. And as you saw this morning already, uh, on Friday, they started milling 4th Street, 5th Street, Dewey, and Hickory and got her done in a day. Woohoo! What a machine. Boy, I wish I had $2 million. I'd buy that and rent it out for $500,000 an hour. But... Uh, <laughs> 
boy, I was pretty impressed. Anyway, that's the last. So if you're a guest with us, we've gone through the last three years, phase one, phase two, we're part of phase three. And uh, hopefully we'll get our parking lot kind of thing finished off and it'll be good. So, whew, Dave Smith wanted to know, should this shirt be shown? God would not have me be a quilter if he wanted me to cook and clean. <laughs> Dave has such a sense of humor. He's been complaining about this quilting thing for months now. I'm just telling you. But in the midst of that, Kathy still perseveres, and she does ministry. And so here, tomorrow, you can meet at the church here at 9.30, otherwise meet at the McCrossan Boys Ranch at 10.30. And then she said that after the um, delivery has been made and stuff, she's actually going to buy, apparently she has Dave's bank account, <laughs> and is going to buy lunch for everybody. So I'll meet you at lunch uh, at the All Day Cafe, but for the rest, it's going to be good. No. But if you can, just talk with her after the service so that she knows how many people she can expect and or order a table. So, whew, it's going to be kind of fun. I'm happy with that. All right. Are we ready? Jungle away. Kaka! 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 Kathy! Kathy! Kaka! What are you doing? Um, You're supposed to be looking for BBS volunteers. Yeah, I know. And I am. Kaka! Kaka! What's Ka with the binoculars and the bird noises then? Well, it worked for watching birds, so why not for volunteer searching? Kaka! Okay. Ka -ka. I am so confused. You need to explain this one to me. Well, when you go bird watching, you want to see something special, right? Not just any old bird. I mean, if I wanted to see any old bird, I'd sit on my porch and watch a robin or a sparrow. No, if you want to see okay. something special, then you do the bird calls. Because when those special birds hear you, they respond. And then you can find them. Okay, but we aren't bird watching here. We're signing up volunteers for VBS. Okay, just, just hear me out, okay? okay? We want special people that um, want to put, make a difference in the lives of boys and girls, right? And we want people who are excited to share God's word. All right, absolutely. VBS provides an amazing opportunity for adults to encourage boys and girls with the love of Jesus, teach them Bible truths, and provide a can't-miss experience. But I'm still not sure how bird calls are going to help us find those people. Hmm. Well, this year's VBS is set in the jungle, right? Right. And some jungles are part of rainforests, right? Right. And what do you see and what do you find in the rainforest? Birds? Exactly! <laughs> so, I'm watching for those grown-ups who are ready to embark on the jungle journey with us this summer. Kaka! Kaka! You know what, Roxy? I really am surprised that I haven't found any yet. I really thought they would answer my special VBS volunteer call. You mean Kaka is your special VBS volunteer yeah. call? <laughs> Have you tried using words instead? You might have a little better luck. Oh, I could try that, I guess. How about something like this? The Great Jungle Journey is June 10th through the 14th from nine to noon. At the VBS Jeep table, people can sign up to help in many different ways. We're looking for people to help during the week. We need people to help decorate beforehand. We need people to donate items. But most of all, we need people to pray for a wonderful week for the kids. Please stop at the Jeep table to see how you can help. How about that? I guess we could give your way a try. But if it doesn't work, I'm searching high and low for those amazing adults that we need. You know what? This week is just far too important to be shorthanded.
That's the end. Thank you so much for coming and watching, and the Lord bless you as you worship now at your level. Woohoo! Good things. So, uh, there is a Jeep table out there, and you know that it's an authentic Jeep, right? So, if you look at the front end, a Jeep always has seven kind of, yeah, uh, holes, demarcation points, whatever it is. And it's authentic because every Jeep celebrates the fact that there are seven continents that they go on. I didn't know that either. Come to Cheryl Blaine. She knows everything. And so I'm just telling you, she and Kathy did a good table. Uh, there are some things, again, the list is on the table, but some things that you can, uh, you can do. And we're just excited about the things that you can save. Apparently, there were two toilet paper rolls that I found in the church's recycling bin. Uh, Melanie, I'll need to talk to you about that. <clears throat> uh, for the rest, we're, uh, we're doing well. So, Sunday school. Today is the last day, and they're going to have a celebration downstairs during that hour. We're just delighted with uh, the fact that the teachers have done so well. We've got a lot of kids uh, getting certificates for scripture memory. I'm, I'm delighted as a pastor that they're hiding the word of God in their hearts. And so, thanks, teachers, for uh, doing that as well. A good thing. Uh, three family units meeting with the elders will meet underneath the balcony uh, when we come in with our coffee and cake. So just alerting you to that, I'll find you. So that's a good thing there. Let's pray together, if you would, three slides. Father God, we recognize that every morning is a new day. And every day new is your love, your mercies, and your grace. We again affirm that you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us a desire to love you more and to love each other with whom we eat at this your table as we feast from your word and from your table. May we devote each day to you, our Savior and Lord, Jesus the Christ. We pray this in your precious name. Amen and amen. So if you would, on a beautiful spring day, share what your favorite spring flower is, but don't say, hi, I'm sunflower. Say, hi, my name, and then the flower. Go. <laughs> All right. I hope you don't use all of your words at the greeting time so that we have no words at the coffee time. Wow. Continue to worship the Lord in song as we sing together from our hearts and from the grateful souls. Let's worship the King. Your glories and wonders what tongue can reach. 
Be seated. God is good. So again, without an H in front of the word, it would be Greek. With an H in front of the word, it's Hebrew. So this morning you sang Hebrew. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallel. Praise. Yah. Jehovah. Short form. Praise the Lord. And as we come together around the table of the Lord this morning, as we come with hearts that are right because of what Jesus Christ has done, we uh, get to say hallelujah. Praise be to him. So as we think of the table and hearts being right and proper, John, who is the author of our text this morning and for the next few weeks in the book of Revelation, but as he writes to his dear children, he calls it, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, as he writes to the churches, he says, my little children, I'm willing, I'm writing that these things to you so that you wouldn't sin. If anyone does sin, we have our advocate with the Father, with Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And so because of these words of Scripture, it's in the strength of his assurance that you and I get to confess our sins to God. So I'm going to put up two slides we won't read them. I want you to read them silently. And let's just set the table for the Holy Spirit to come. And again, the Holy Spirit does not shame. The Holy Spirit does not make us feel guilty. The Holy Spirit brings, in a sense, a, a godly conviction that we've lived in ways that have not honored the Lord. And in the stillness of these moments, we get to agree with them and to confess. So we confess to you these things. So prayers, intentionality, or so spirit of the living god come and do what you do best you who have been at work in every heart it's how we become born again it's how we've been able to receive the gift that jesus is and it's not that it's a one-time thing. It's something that we recognize as we fight with the, the world and our flesh and our sinfulness. That we need your spirit and your word. We need people around us to help us, to model for us how to live, to speak into our lives with love and compassion, to speak into our lives with guidance and with discipline. So come, Spirit of the living God, be at work in all of our hearts. So together, let's pray this on the screen, would you? Grant us the healing that comes from your presence and the cleansing of your all-powerful word. 
Grant us forgiveness now in the name of our wonderful Savior because of what he has done for us. In Christ Jesus our Lord do we pray. Amen and amen. So, again, what does the word say? The word that captures our hearts, the word that makes us uh, constantly lift up our hearts and say to the Lord, your name is good and you are gracious and graceful. Psalm 103, you know how it starts, very familiar. And uh, what I'd love to do is to be able to read that section 8 through 13. So bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then these verses. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger. He's abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor is his anger forever. He doesn't deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love and his steadfast love to all those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Wow. Think of that movie, Forrest Gump. Might be a silly thing, but uh, he runs. And what does he do? He runs for three years. What would happen if I took you all out to the parking lot and I said, I want you all to get on Highway 44 and start running west and then keep going? and keep going, and keep going. You'd never be able to stop. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. Wow. That's why we can come to the table. That's why we praise him. That's why we say again and again, hallelujah. I come with a heart of gratitude, Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. With that in mind, recognizing there's this phrase, the forgiveness of sins in this creed, and every time we do the sacrament, be it of baptism or of communion, we say this together. Again, it's a, a unifying thing, but it's also something that gets us to believe all of those major tenets of Scripture. So if you would stand... I would invite you to say together with me the Apostles' Creed. So, Christian, what is it that you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And amen, and be seated. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Wow. So we get ready to hear more wonderful things that this word tells us about Christ, about forgiveness, about our hope, our future. Pray with me. As we think of your word, Old Testament, Moses, not only writing it down, but then teaching it to the people. As we think of your word, we get to Old Testament and a prophet and a priest, we get to Ezra. And the people were so moved that it says for, for hours they stood as Ezra and the Levites read the word and explained the word to God's people, and they were encouraged. As we think of your word, we go to the New Testament, and we see where John writes in the beginning was the word. 
the living word is Jesus Christ, and he also then wrote words for us, words that show us that Jesus is full of grace and truth. And then we think of the word that we'll be looking at here in the book of Revelation. And we're just mindful that from beginning to end, hmm, you've given to us this wonderful gift, not only in the person of Jesus, but in this, the printed word. The printed word that is profitable for us, the printed word that, that jumps off the page, the printed word that helps us to sing and raise our hands and declare again, <laughs> O oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So help us as we're students, not only of the printed word, but as we study the Christ, to know God our Father more. To that end, help us, Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. Thanks be to God. So if you would, take out your Bibles and... Uh, if you need a little encouragement, I'd, I'd say bring one from home. These next uh, many weeks, we'll be doing Revelation 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I think you'll find it helpful to underline and circle and to do some inductive Bible study stuff as we teach and preach. So thanks be to God. We're not going to do the background of the text right now. We're not going to talk about how all 22 chapters are laid out, the five visions that John shares with us and all of those things. We don't have time this morning for that. But what we do want to do is we want to focus on Jesus. So this week and next week, John brings his, his telescope or his magnifying glass and he puts Jesus right in the center, and that's all we get to see. The first part, Revelation 1, and the second part next week. It's all about Jesus. So, the first eight verses, shall we? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. From John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who was, or is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who were before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us, to him who has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom, made us priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold. He's coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Thanks be to the Lord. Keep that open, if you would, and let's see what it is that he would teach us. So suddenly we have this book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. And you say, um, uh, it's got the number seven. Numbers are important in this eschatological work, a thing that talks about the, the present as well as the future. And so you've got this seven, you've got 12, you've got three. And what's so interesting that in these first eight verses, John is playing with triads a lot, like the Trinity, Right? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. There are multiple triads of blessings, things about Jesus. Triads, triads. We're going to look at a lot of those as we spend some time together these next weeks. But to, to start us off, just let your eyes go through those first four verses. What, what's, the, uh, what's the chain? How, how do we get here, right? So we start first with God. So uh, God gave him, God gave something, Jesus Christ, to 
a person gave, God is the author who brings Christ so that we can see him. And here he sent an angel, which is not news to us, right? There's an angel in the book of Genesis. There's angels in the book of Matthew. Angels in 67 times in the book of Revelation, there's reference to an angel. And again, it makes our mind go back, right? Well, what are angels or who are angels? Hebrews 1, 14, right? Are not angels ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit salvation? So God is using whatever order of angel it might be, archangel, seraphim, cherubim, guardian angels, but God uses them in his way at his will to bring along here for us a message. And so there's an angel that speaks and shares things from God Revealed in Jesus Christ to John, the youngest of the 12 disciples, right? Probably uh, this book written maybe 90, 95 AD. John is an old man. He's the youngest in the four gospel accounts. And here John has this, this word from God through Christ, sending of an angel, and he writes it to his audience here, people he had us in store people he has in mind. Ultimately, by the time we get to chapter 2, we'll find these seven churches. Wow. All recorded for us. I'm amazed. I'm thankful. Keep the word open, but let it be that I invite our elder board to come and to sit up at the front. We'll have two elders on either side this morning as we get ready for communion, and we're going to do communion and the sermon in bits because the text just allows us the privilege of doing that. So, in the Old Testament, you have the Passover. God gives the word, and the people of God fulfill it. In the New Testament, we have Jesus who, on the night in which he was betrayed, he, he calls his disciples that are there in that upper room. And Jesus wants to reveal himself. He does that in person. And as we get to the last gospel, or to the last chapter in the gospel of Luke, chapter 24, when he's invited into the, to, to the home of these two men that are, are, are walking on the road to Emmaus, uh, he reveals himself again at this table like he wants to do this morning to you and to me. He wants to reveal himself to us at this table. Wow. Mm -hmm. So with his disciples there, he, he, he wants them not to forget. And just like us, here in this congregation, seven, eight times a year, we celebrate communion. The elder board overseeing sacraments and worship and church discipline and membership and education. I'm grateful for them. We're grateful for them. And they again say to us on this day, don't forget, it's all about Jesus and it's about you and your relationship with him. So Jesus says to his disciples, and then Paul records it for us. I've opened up the scriptures to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, should you want to know more. But Paul tells us that when the disciples had indeed gathered together, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to his father, and, and then he broke it for them. And he said, take, eat, do this because it's, it's my body which is broken for you. Don't forget, a price has been paid. Remember, be grateful. And after they had supped, he took a cup, and then he blessed it. And then he said again to his people, don't forget, I'm doing something for you. I'm going to a cross, I'm paying a price, I'm willingly giving up my life so that you can have your life. Wow. Don't forget. Remember, my blood spilled for the forgiveness of your sins. Wow. 
we don't want to forget. In fact, Paul writes, and it's interesting, right? He gives us two kinds of commands. I'm asking you to believe, he said. I received from the Lord this, the, the cup and the bread and all of those things. But then he says, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner. What's that? That's why we spent some time getting our heart right. It's why the worship team sang before the service to help us get into that, that sense of gratitude. To say, God, you're changing graves into gardens. You're changing life situations when it was hopeless for the people at the Red Sea. And you opened the highway into the sea. And you changed things. And you've changed me. You've transformed me. I am a new creation. Oh, thanks be to God. So from preparation before the service to prayers of confession and words of assurance to the joy of remembering and participating in this sign and seal. That's what it is. It's a sign to you and me of, of what Jesus did, but it's also a, a, a sign promise pointing the way. What's so wonderful about this is that, well, this table, it's about remembrance, it's about communion, and it's about hope. And what's so unbelievably wonderful is how the Lord ties these three thoughts into our text from Revelation. It's about remembrance, it's about communion, and it's about hope. Right before we go to the text to look at those three pieces, let me just say, again, here our board of elders loves it when people come to say, I'd like to become part of the, the family of God. We examine folks. People make profession of faith. People come in through a transfer. People come in through a reaffirming their faith. We delight in that. And so uh, part of that tradition, for us at least, is when folks can, can not eat in an unworthy manner, when they can understand with their heart and when they understand with their head, when the Spirit of God has grabbed them, it's, it's a wonderful thing. If you're a guest with us and you've done this in another fellowship or another church, we invite you to participate with us. In just a few moments, the elders will come with the tray and they'll come and spread, pass it through. Then we'll have another thought or two from the sermon and then we'll come with the cup. We're delighted that the Lord has graciously allowed us this morning to celebrate. So, look at this, right? Verses 4 through 8. Grace to you and peace. From whom? Well, from the one who was and is and is to come. Who is that? Who is the one who's omnipresent? Who's the one who's omniscient? Who's the one who's omnipotent, all-powerful? Who's the one who said to Moses when he came in Exodus chapter 3, the record is for us, as he's coming to a burning bush that's not consumed because the Spirit of the living God is there speaking the word from God, and he says to Moses, take off your shoes. And Moses says, wait a minute, who am I talking to? And what does Yahweh say? Uh, you're speaking to I am. I am. I am in the beginning. I am here now. And I am and always will be. Wow. What kind of a God is this? And I throw up my hands and say to you again and again, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Who is this God? I remember, that's why we did the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth. At the very beginning, he was. Wow. And from the seven spirits who are before the throne. What, who, the seven spirits? Uh, there are seven churches. We're going to look at those in Revelation 2 and 3. And in each, there is this, this, this spirit who uh, comes and speaks to the churches. It's the Holy Spirit. 
So the seven spirits, it's one person, it's the Holy Spirit. But John uses this to set us up already for the seven churches described in two and three. And then the third, and from Jesus Christ. How is this remembrance, communion, and hope? Can we, can we start right here? When Jesus walked this earth, he was the faithful witness. What did he do? He came to do the will of his Father. He was faithful to the Father. When somebody said, well, what do you eat? He goes, my bread, my food is to do my Father's will. And as we come to the table, we're mem- <laughs> so unbelievably overcome by how Jesus loved his Father. And the question comes to us, how much do we love him too? This is a wonderful reminder again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and mind. Wow. So he was faithful all the way to the end of the cross, at the end of his life. He was a witness. He testified to these things. Wow. He's the firstborn of the dead. Why? The day that he was buried on Good Friday, but on that Easter Sunday morning, the ground shook. The, oh, the, the things that happened on that day. <laughs> and the very power that raised him from the dead, as we're reminded of that, in the past is for us today again communion in the present and it will be our hope as we planted daryl westerman into the ground a week ago there's going to be new life wow this jesus the ruler over all the kings of the earth That's him. So, we think of he's the one who we remember. He's the one who we think of now. He's the one whom we think of in our future. Elders, would you come and receive the love of God as they give to you.
We do this in remembrance and with joy. A body broken for us, thanks be to Jesus Christ. I apologize as well. I forgot to tell you it was all gluten-free bread every bite. So we're going to do that consistently just for people. So remembrance, communion, right? Oh, from Jesus Christ. To him who loves us, has freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us a kingdom priest to our God. What do we know right now? On this, the 5th of May, we know that he loves us. Oh, he loves me. I want to express it. I want to receive it. I want to delight in it. I want to revel in the love of this Christ, who in spite of him knowing everything about me, loves me still. Wow. (laughs) The one who freed us from our sins because he paid the price. And we live cognizant of that. We live differently. Thanks be to him. And he's made us a kingdom. Yes, we live in America. Yes, there are 193, 194 countries recognized in the world by the United Nations. But it's something that transcends all of that and even more is the kingdom that he brings. He's brought it now in part, and it continues to grow as we share the good news of Jesus. But one day that kingdom will be here in its fullness as we say, let your kingdom come. Wow. And he's made us priests. Oh, in the Old Testament, there was always that thought. In the New Testament at times, people put that on the pastor or the domine or the minister. But... (laughs) Just like I say good morning saints to all of you, so we can say good morning priests. Male nor female. We're one in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what do priests do? Priests not only offer a sacrifice of praise, but they also help to bring others into that throne room. So as you, over Mondays and Saturdays, talk to your family, your kids, your co-workers, other students, you get to be a priest. You get to invite them into that beautiful presence of the Holy One. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Wow. You get to do it in word and in deed. It's amazing. Remembrance, communion, and the cup. The cup. Again, we'd be honored if you held it together until we could all partake as one. Elders, would you come as Kathy plays?
Jesus paid it all. <laughs> all. Not just a little bit. In this moment of communion, we celebrate the fact that we're totally forgiven. Thanks be to Christ. So how does it end? We've looked at the past, we've looked at the present, and our text tells us to look to the future, both forward and upward, right? The text tells us he's coming again for a second time, the second advent, just as he came the first time, and you can take that to the bank because he'll come the second. And we long for the day of his appearing. 1 John chapter 2, last few verses. Wow. And then think about it. This, this almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, when Jesus comes again, it says every eye is going to see it. How does that happen? People all around this globe, right? Seven and a half billion. If the Lord comes this afternoon, we will all see him somehow. Wow. And we will be in awe. <sighs> this Jesus, the one who came as a little baby the first time, comes as the king of kings the second time. And then the gospel writer John, now in this book of Revelation, wants to make it very clear. Today better be the day of salvation. It better be the time that you and I take advantage of the Holy Spirit's working in our hearts to receive Christ as Lord because when Christ comes the second time, it's true, we'll bow down and we'll worship and we'll declare with our mouth that He's Lord. But the difference about Him coming the first time as Savior and the second time He comes as Judge and all that has been done in the name of evil and all the horrible things that have been done to people by people. And all the nations that have turned their back on him, they will wail. They will, they will call out. There will be a groan heard around the world because now Jesus comes to set things right. Wow. I, says God now, so the first seven verses, there's that piece of Jesus, and all of a sudden it's like God wants to put his stamp on it, and verse 8 is what he does, right? I'm telling you right now, I'm the beginning of the alphabet, and I'm the last of the alphabet. I'm the beginning and the end. I was always and always will be. I want you to know that. That's who I am, says God Almighty. <sighs> And the love that he has for us and the love that we have for him, he receives it and he pours it out and he says, love me. Wow. So, we came to the table, we ate, we came to the word, we've eaten. What do we do with it? Just close with these two slides. Do you know the greatness of the, the one? Have you received the grace and the peace of the one that John recognizes throughout? The, the, the most glorious names. Yeshua, Savior, Redeemer, the rock, the bread of life, the water of Oh, wow. He's the self-existent one. He's the one who never began. He's the one who's never going to end. He's self-sufficient. Today I ask again, is today the day of salvation for you? Have you made that wonderful, the gift is being offered. Will you say to Jesus, yes, I want to make you Savior and Lord. I repent, I confess, I turn to you. As we pray, and we'll do that, and the team will close us. Jennifer Beekler has finished her fourth and last of the AC chemo treatments, and then uh, new treatments will begin. 
Rowan uh, Rosie is in, uh, in Compass for therapy for probably the next two weeks. He's been hospitalized since last Saturday. Keep him in prayer. Brad, Diane is off the uh, vac wound, wound vac, sorry, backwards. I'm such a guy. Martha continues to recover. Daryl continues with his treatments and other things that are there. We'll send out an email this afternoon. Again, if you don't get a copy, let me know. We'll send it out to you. We do that every week, and uh, we'll give you more as well. So, why don't we uh, thank the Lord. So, as we started by looking back at your first coming, Lord, which was predicted hundreds and thousands of years before you came, we're amazed. And as we know that right now you're interceding for us, you're praying for us in the here and now, and your love is very evident in the fellowship of the saints, of the communion of saints, of these folks that we're looking at who are not only saints but also priests, Hmm. Oh, that we would be able to introduce others. We know that we're not in, uh, we can't convert people. That's the role of the Holy Spirit, but we can set the table, so to speak. We can lay out the carpeting and we can say, let me tell you about the one who's changed my life and he'd love to do that to you as well. And his name is Jesus. And then we think forward to that glorious day. Oh, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. That's how the book of Revelation closes. And that's how we'll close this morning and say, it could be that you come back. Even today, Maranatha, find us faithful. So help us to love God. Help us to love others. Help us as we go to the Macross and the Boyce Ranch. Let it be that the love of God already goes before these ladies and in the gift and distribution of these quilts. Let it be as we go from place to place at these grad parties that we celebrate, but also that we can have conversations about the Lord Jesus. And so to him who loves us, who gave his life for us, and who lives for us now and forever, thanks be to God. Amen. All right, Sunday school kids, it is time for your last class and or party. We're grateful. And as the team comes forward, the invitation is for each and every one of us to long for that glorious day, a glorious day. As uh, the team comes forward, I'm mindful of the fact on Tuesday, Kurt Vale, Kurt, just put up your hand so folks can see you right there. Kurt, there he is. He's going on an honor flight, so uh, he'll be in Washington, D.C. after serving over two and a half years in uh, the Far East. And so uh, the grace of the Lord go with you. May you be uh, encouraged. And so this Tuesday, honor flight there. And we want to honor the Lord. So stand with us, would you, and let's sing together. Oh. 
So answer me this, did Jesus come the first time? Yes. Is Jesus with us now? Yes. Will Jesus come again? Yes. Oh, live with that assurance and go in his grace and in his peace. The Lord bless you all. Amen and amen. Yeah.